Hey everybody, uh, so this is how you can uh, set up scheduled or delayed notifications uh, in your Adalo app using AdaStacks. Um, you know, the, the typical approach here is to use something like Zapier uh, to do this. Uh, Zapier is very expensive for doing this because I think you only get like 750 zaps, uh, zap actions uh, for like 30 bucks. Um, that means that you can only send 750 delayed notifications um, from your app for 30 bucks. That's like uh, outrageous. Um, but with AdaStacks, you can actually send up to 10,000 notifications for 30 bucks, um, which is a, pr a pretty good deal. So here's how you set it up. All right, um, I've just got a button here. Um, let me get myself out of the way. I've just got a button here and. Um, I'm just going to go to create an action here, um, and bef before I start this, I should say you do need a, a paid version of Adalo to access this uh, custom action feature here, um, and you will need a uh, an AdaStacks account. Uh, you can sign up for one of those at AdaStacks.com, and there is a free tier as well, so you can do this for free. All right. Uh, so now that's out of the way. Let's go to custom action. We'll do a new custom action. And I'm going to uh, make this uh, be um, an event reminder. All right, there's all kinds of different scheduled notifications that you can send to your users. You are plenty creative enough to figure out how you need to know how to, or you know, to to know how you want to use this. Um, but I'm just going to send like a, a notification to my user later, right? Um, the app is going to send it to them. Right, so that they don't have to actually take an action to be notified about something. All right, so we're going to make this a create. We'll hit next, and this API base URL, uh, you can actually find this on your AdaStax uh, dashboard here. Um, if I click on account, uh, we'll get to that, but uh, let me go ahead and open up the documentation for scheduled notifications. Um, and the help guide is. Um, you know, really good for refreshing your memory, especially in terms of the uh, inputs that need to go into it. All right, so um, let me go ahead back here. So this base URL is actually uh, just this uh, long link here. So I'm just going to copy this, and I will paste it right here. All right, and this does look pretty crazy. Um, you know, you may have to slide it sideways to get to where you need to be. Um, but you'll see that it, it quickly kind of parses itself down once we start uh, switching out the inputs here. Um, so what I'm going to do is create some inputs to replace this capitalized, each of these pieces of capitalized text in here. All right. Um, and if you're ever confused about what the input should be, you can reference the table here that's in the help guide. Um, and this is a really good way uh, to do it. Um, we have a suggested input name, what type of input it is, and then also a suggested input value. Okay, so I'm just going to start copying some of this stuff over here. Um, I'm going to add my first input, which is a text input, and this is actually going to be the um, the AdaStax uh, API key. All right, and the second one, let me get my AdaStax API key from my account here. So we will copy this and just paste it here in the value. All right, so there's that one. Let's go ahead and add our Adalo app ID. And this Adalo app ID um, can be found in this section right here. So if you look up here, I've got my app where it says apps. And then after apps right here, so after after apps and before data, I have this like little string of like numbers and letters here. That is your app ID. All right. Um, so I'm going to add that as a text input. Just pop this in here. And then I'm actually just going to copy this. I think that's probably a pretty good way to do it. All right. Paste it in there. Hit done. So we're done with that one. Uh, our Adalo API key, and this is going to be found. Um, you may want to grab this before you start setting up your action. Um, but for test purposes, uh, this doesn't really matter as much because we just want to kind of create the action and then save it, right? So um, 
this can be anything. We're just going to type in a bunch of absurd stuff here. Um, the uh, the next one here is the to user email. Okay, so this is the e this is going to be the email of the user that you're going to send the notification to. All right, and this doesn't have to be anything. Um, uh, this doesn't even have to be real. You can just send it to test at test.com um, if you want to. Um, sometimes it's good to even have a test user in there. All right. So let's grab this next one, the notification title. This is going to be the title that the user sees, the, the part that's in bold that's on the push notification. Um, all right. Um, let's just call it new like on your post or something like that. Right. All right. So we've got notification title. Let's do notification body. And I should throw out the disclaimer as well that um, in order for these type of push notifications to work, um, you will need to have your app published to the App Store. This does not work for PWA, so this preview or this share, it's not going to work for that. And it will also not work for web apps as well. Um, so you need to have a native version uh, of your app in the App Store for this to work. All right. All right, so let's just call this friend liked your post. Say thanks. Now, all right, let's so get our notification body. And then there's one last thing, and that is the scheduled date time that you want uh, the, uh, the notification to occur. All right, so I'm going to actually add this as a date. Um, and this is a very important field because if it's not formatted correctly, um, it, it won't actually go through. So um, I've given a sample uh, input value here that you can use, and this works just fine. Um, it's dated uh, into the future. I'll probably even in increase this date um, at some point, but you can actually just copy that and stick that in there. Um, and this date, uh, it's important that when... Uh, we get to actually putting the stuff in the action that it's actually formatted like this. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right. So we've got our inputs made. Let's go ahead and replace these values here with those inputs. So this is my API key here. Let's go over here and choose my Stacks API key. I've got app ID right here in caps. So let's replace that with my Adalo app ID. I've got my Adalo key, okay, which is my Adalo API key, my two user email, and this is the two user email, notification title, notification title. I've got the body of the notification, and of course the scheduled date time right here, okay. So there's, there's the custom action. Um, the method here is going to be a get. And once we have this all set up and everything looks like it should be good to go, we'll go ahead and run the test request. And again, one thing to note about AdaStacks is that AdaStacks always returns a successful test. And this is so that if you're halfway through setting up your action, uh, you can always go back in and uh, save it uh, even if you're not finished setting it up, right? So um, even if this fails, if you if you get a failure message, um, or if you get a uh, uh, sometimes it's down here in the show full response, it'll say you know failed or whatever, um, or there was an error. Um, you can still save the custom action um, and come back to it and and set it up later if you need to. All right. So just make sure that you pay attention to the success message here and the the response. Make sure that you have this. All right. All right, so we'll save the custom action. And now that we have it set up, we've got all these nice uh, inputs here. Um, I can, you know, again, put my AdaStacks key in here. Let me just paste that in. Uh, again, my Adalo app ID. Uh, because we've set up this custom action, this custom action is now available in pretty much any app in our, um, in our Adalo account, all right? Um, so let me just go ahead, I'll just go ahead and paste this stuff back in here. 
All right. The Adalo API key here is, um, you know, again, this was just kind of some letters that we threw together, but it, really what you'll want to do is go here to your settings, scroll down to app access, uh, click generate key if you haven't already, and then you'll actually want to copy this key and place this in there instead. All right. So this is, uh, this is where we'll want to put our actual Adalo API key, all right? The two user email, right? This will just, this maybe is just the logged in user's email. Notification title, maybe um, you like. And let's just say that we had other users in here. We could say, you know, uh, logged in user, let's just say that uh, you know, this person liked your post. I realize I call this event reminder and it's actually a an actual notification for a post. Let's call this uh, uh, instead of doing that let's do this. Let's call it uh, this is your reminder. Alright and let's just call this like uh, Drink more water right now. All right. And the scheduled date time, again, this is the most important part right here, is um, we want to make sure that whatever the date that we choose, um, let's say we want it to be, this is really the only date that I've got. But let's just say uh, that it's the logged in user's uh, created date, so the date that they joined, right? Um, but we want to add, like maybe, um, add some some dates to it, right? So like plus one day, right? So what we would want to make sure that we did is just uh, under this formatting here, we're going to want to make sure that we format this uh, as a date time instead. All right, let me do this. All right, so now that we've got that, uh, this scheduled date time is actually the most important part. Um, so to do this, we'll just want to make sure that uh, we, if we're, we're inputting the date here, that we put, you know, obviously the, the created date here. You don't really need to format this because it's already a number field. It recognizes that it's that it's kind of a date. So um, uh, that's that's usually all you need right there. All right. Uh, and that's how you set up a custom action to schedule a notification for a later date. Um, you don't need a separate collection, a separate you know scheduled notifications collection or anything like that. You just uh, would set up the custom action just like that, send it to Ada Stacks, and Ada Stacks will take care of the rest. All right.